welcome back. We're still in the beta for FM23, but I think I have found a very good tactic for you all. So this tactic is a narrow diamond, and it's built on the back of the narrow diamond from FM22 that did so well in our tester that was lifted from the Discord and one of my moderators, uh, Too Fuzzy Dunlop. So uh, congratulations to him on creating a tactic that has seen some legs and lasted now all the way to FM23. I've had to make a few tweaks to it to help it fit into this match engine a little bit better, um, and I think you'll enjoy the results. Now, if you're like me, FM23 has been difficult so far. Um, it is a more difficult match engine than FM22 was so far. Not every tactic from FM22 can just be ported over to FM23. You are going to have to think about especially the defense. Like, where should you be backing off defenders? Should you be stepping up with your defenders? Should you be trapping inside, trapping outside, stopping crosses? <clears throat> blocking crosses. There are lots of options for you on that defensive engagements page of the tactics screen. And we'll be learning together throughout this uh, video series this season on what is the most optimal way with what shape to uh, play with those settings. But for now, we're going to focus on the narrow diamond that we've developed for this thing. So now, uh, two things I do want to say, make sure that you like and subscribe to the video, um, and feel free to let me know in the comments how this tactic works for you uh, during the beta, and we'll find out later if it continues to work in the full version of the game. And number two as well, this is supported by our Discord server. Total Tactics is a Discord community where you can download a free testing database to put all of your own tactics through the test ringer and see what you're able to come up with tactically. In order to support the Discord server, I have launched my first Patreon account, and there are lots of different tiers that you can access by joining the Patreon, and I can review some tactics, we can consult on some of your uh, saves that are happening, there'll be an exclusive draft uh, for patrons in the future, and patrons at the end of the video will get named um, and supported for their uh support for the Total Tactics project. So please get involved. It's a great way to support the Discord community, the creation and maintenance of the database and the Discord. And I'll continue to bring you excellent tactics throughout the FM23 cycle. Let's take a look at the Narrow Diamond. So before we get too involved into the tactic, I do want to tell you a little bit about the methodology so far for testing tactics in the beta. What I've done is I've created a database uh, and it's available at uh, to the Total Tactics Discord. The link again is in the description that gives you Southampton and West Ham to be the managers of for uh, this particular season. So and all we're doing is simulating just the Premier League. No other leagues are loaded. No other English divisions are loaded. And we're just simulating in the Premier League. I've chosen not to use uh, one of the good teams you've had. I mean, not that West Ham is bad, obviously, but um, so sorry any Hammers fans out there, but I'm not interested in testing the tactic out with the Chelsea's, Manchester City's, Liverpool's, Arsenal's, Manchester United's, Tottenham's of the world. Instead, I'd rather, you know, test with a team that wants to challenge those teams and see if we can move a team from a different stratosphere of the league into those Champions League places. And that's exactly what this tactic has done for West Ham. So West Ham United has finished third in the Premier League, and we'll go much more in depth into the results and where the goals are coming from when we get there. But just to give you an idea of what's capable of this tactic, that, that's what we're looking at. So here we go. It's a narrow diamond. The roles are are the same as they were uh, for the narrow tactic that we ran on FM22. We have double advance forwards, shadow strikers, see him attack with a box-to-box -box midfielder next to them, uh, defensive midfielder, two inverted wingbacks, and two ball-playing defenders. Um, the tactic is very attacking, and similar to FM22, overlaps are turned on despite having inverted wingbacks. So it's something that for a lot of people is not something that you would normally do. But what it ends up doing is it makes this inverted wingback, instead of being someone that tucks all the way towards the goal, they kind of tuck towards this, like the edge of the 18. Um, and what that means is your inverted wingbacks are in a crossing position 
But since we have low crosses turned on, those low crosses from this kind of position are very dangerous. Rather than a wingback being out here and having to connect with your forwards all the way across the field, the inverted wingbacks on this overlap, uh, like, keeps them a little bit wider and doesn't have them funnel into the midfield that does get a little bit congested with four central midfielders, right? So having these IWBs on overlaps is a great way to have them at least hold this channel a little bit better and not dive inside, but keep the tactic and shape narrow and compact. I think it's an incredible um, suggestion by Fuzzy. This is something from Fuzzy's instructions originally uh, that have really played well for me in this tactic and others. Um, so the couple things that had to change here for uh, this year in particular and a few tweaks that I made. The first is this advance forward no longer has stay wider, uh, whereas this one does. So what this advance forward does is it creates space for both the CM attack and the shadow striker to fit in between the two advance forwards. But because there's a box to box midfielder behind the left forward, I took that instruction off and it seemed to uh, pay some dividends. And you'll see that later in the stats breakdown. Um, so the other things that are intriguing now about the system is this defensive shape. Uh, this new instruction to be able to trap inside is something that I have turned on here in where obviously we're not playing a mid block or a low block or anything like that yet. Uh, we're just keeping this high pressing engagement on the attacking mentality, but trapping inside where we have numbers, um, not letting defender attackers get to the wide areas of our IWBs. And I think IWBs with trap inside is something that works really well together because where IWBs are vulnerable, right, is around the edges and towards the sideline. Now, I'm hoping that Trap Inside, as we do more and more tests and more and more gameplay, shows that IWBs can help seal the edge and funnel those players into your DM, funnel those players into uh, your center back pairings and keep, keep the game compact. So that's what we've been aiming for. And obviously the results for West Ham United uh, were very good. So and we'll go through those results here in a second. But before we do that, let's take a look at some highlights and exactly how the tactic seems to be playing uh, for West Ham. All right, on this highlight, it is meant to illustrate exactly why that right-sided striker has stay wider as an instruction to hopefully kind of illustrate to you uh, the kind of passages of plays that you should accept, expect from uh, this tactic. So here we go. Emerson gets the ball up to Suchek. Suchek here plays a nice ball into the channel here where Antonio, who is the right-sided striker, was ready for it and has stayed wide. Now, because of that, Lanzini is able to hit this gap to the inside of Jerry. Jared Bowen, who's the other inside forward, and gives you two runners, which normally would be three, but Suchek, as the CM attack in this uh, game, did come a little bit wider out here into this channel to get away from the defense to be able to make this pass. But even then, if the pass came from like the inverted wing back into this channel, Antonio would have three targets to get this cross and probably only two defenders. Right now, it's a two on one here headed towards the penalty spot as Evans is forced to track Antonio. Um, so we'll watch the play continue and he gets it across and Lanzini unmarked makes a great run off the ball and is able to score. So a really simple highlight, but really illustrates the power of the space creation uh, by that advance forward staying wide. Now that's not an instruction you should give if you're not filling the space, but if you're able to fill the space that the advance forward vacates, it's extremely powerful. This highlight is to illustrate, as if there were any questions, whether or not CM attack was still a strong role on this year's game. So playing as the CM attack today in this tactic is Lucas Paqueta. Jared Bowen is playing as that left-sided forward, who doesn't have stay wide or turned on, but sometimes, obviously, the passage of play will demand it. Um, but here, if we watch this highlight, you can see Jared Bowen running into the, the wide area with the ball, and he just checks it up and then hoofs it over, and that defense overreacted to that striker sitting so deep, right? Bowen being way high and wide over here, kept a high line for the Manchester City defense holding, which meant the CM attack run from Lucas Paqueta could break down that line. Bowen was able to lift the ball over top. There are numbers pushing the edge of that line because of the shadow striker, the attacking role, and Mikel Antonio at the end of the line playing as that stay wider striker on the right um, just created 
get a lot of space for those attackers. So if you have an attacker that stays high and sucks the defense up and higher, and you have the players then to exploit those gaps like CM attacks and Shadow Strikers, you're still able to generate a lot of narrow goals from early crosses or through balls. And that is something that I'm still seeing on this match engine and something that should find you joy as well as you're building your tactics. All right, on this goal, I want to kind of illustrate, too, what narrow tactics are able to accomplish so far in this match engine. When you don't have the wide option and you have low crosses turned on, it tends to mean that players, even in just semi-wide areas, are going to cross the ball via a through ball that kind of stays low. Sometimes it's on the deck, sometimes it's a low little looping ball like we saw from Jared Bowen in the previous highlight. Uh, but in this highlight, the box-to-box -box midfielder is never going to run wide with the ball and takes the opportunity then to hit this early cross uh, into space. Now, the other interesting thing here is Jared Bowen is the goal scorer, and because he doesn't have stay wider on, unlike the other one, he is able, when he doesn't have the ball, to be able to maintain that narrow run and be there. But also, as you watch this highlight, notice the number of other options, too, that are just kind of waiting on the edge of the Everton back line to break them down when Suchek delivers this ball. So uh, we'll start the play. Tilo Kader has the ball, and he plays it quickly here into Suchek, and then Suchek just makes a quick pass. But... If we back it up after Bowen puts this ball into the back of the net, you can see that it's four on four making this run here. Um, and in the middle of the field, you've got these guys. So it's one, two, three, four blue shirts, right? And one, two, three, four West Ham shirts. We're not counting. Uh, we're not counting. I think that's Ghana Gay uh, here because he is behind the play and not influencing these four runners. And you can even look at the imbalance too, because this is the stay wider striker, the CM attack coming through from that right side, right behind him. And then the shadow striker. So we are unbalanced. Like it is going to generate more runs down the right. Um, but Bowen is the one who's able to break break it down and get through and score. So there's just a lot of options going forward with this tactic. Sometimes even the box-to-box -box midfielder is going to get involved when the ball is being carried by Cresswell as this inverted wing back as well on the left. Um, and so tons of options to pressure their back line. Lots of low crosses, which result in through balls when you don't have players in the wide areas. And it's a great way to exploit the middle of a defense, especially if your opposing team does not have a defensive midfielder. All right, on this highlight, I kind of want to illustrate a passage of play that I think shows where high pressing can still work despite the existence of the mid and low block in the match engine. Additionally, I believe the trap inside is having an influence on this highlight as well. So what you can already see here just from this freeze frame is that this player right here, Suchek is our box-to-box -box midfielder, and he is way over on the touchline. And what I think that is illustrating is he's trying to funnel and shepherd the Everton players back to the middle, which is what we want to see with this trap. And so what that means is, is it creates this congestion along the edge where I think normally there'd be some space to kind of overlap, but Suchek is shutting that down kind of the way like a Carolero might try to. Um, but because of that trap inside and He's trying to funnel them in, which is going to make it a lot easier for Bowen to get involved in the offense to kind of steal this ball back. So we'll go ahead and hit play. Tarkovsky, under a little pressure, plays it up. It's deflected, but then look at all this pressure on the edges, trying to get that play back inside. And then what a finish. Let's look at that one more time, uh, because it's a new animation this year where Fornals gets to this ball first, uses his outside of his boot to kind of toe poke it immediately first time with pace into the far corner. And it looks beautiful. Uh, just watch it one more time here. But look at Fornals. Boom uses the outside of that boot, tucks it into the far corner. Pickford is completely caught a flat foot in and not able to uh, respond to it, but it's just a good goal all around because it's good high pressure by Jared Bowen and is good trapping by Suchek, making sure that there was no overlap possibilities there. It meant that Cresswell then could stand a little bit more in field and be ready for any player that uh, uh, Suchek wasn't able to corral. Uh, instead, Suchek gets that ball back after the high press and then is able to lift a pass into the area where there were still several runners. The shadow striker Fornal scores, but Fratesi and Skimaka were also both available as passing options with three three players still forward uh, as a result of that press. So 
I think this tactic's for real. I think if you play it with even better teams, not that West Ham is bad, but their personnel is somewhat limited compared to some of the other teams you might be choosing to play with, this is a tactic you can do serious damage with, and I hope you find some of the same success that West Ham did in your own save. All right, taking a look at the results, this is a very impressive finish. Now, 77 points might not seem like a lot, but it is overperforming projections for West Ham by quite a bit here in the first season, especially when you consider the fixture congestion of the Conference League, and West Ham made it all the way to the semifinals where they were knocked out by Nice. So there was a lot of games being played by this West Ham team, and yet even using the their roster, which isn't quite as deep as some of the other ma uh, major clubs, they were still able to put together this kind of finish in the Premier League, where they won 24 games. They only won two less games, or two fewer games, than Manchester City and Liverpool, uh, which was an extremely tight race that came down to goal difference, by the way. Uh, but West Ham United, using the narrow diamond, scored more goals than Liverpool. Like plus 31 goal difference, and 90 goals on the season for this West Ham roster is an incredible result. Man City only only managed to score five more over the course of the season. Now, allowing 59 goals is a little bit of more mid-table number uh, in the Premier League, but when you're scoring 90, you can get away with that, and this tactic let West Ham do exactly that, and it's something that I'm uh, really impressed with. When we look at where the kind of statistics came from over the course of the season, Jared Bowen led the team with 36 goals in all competitions and 17 assists. Jared Bowen, as that striker that hold it, played on the left almost the entire season, never drifting wide and less demanded by the by the. Uh, passage of play, hold not not with the stay wider instruction, was able to score 36 times, but still influenced the game with 17 assists. Pablo Fornals, who played 50 games in that shadow striker role, put up 22 goals as a shadow striker. Suchek, who played both CM attack and box-to-box -box midfielder over the course of the season, depending on who else uh, was playing in that midfield, also managed 11 goals and 19 assists. A fantastic season from Suchek, and shows you the power of the tactic to create goals from the middle of the field with those defense splitting passes that we saw in all of those highlights, which are just very impressive. Cresswell as the IWB chipped in 13 assists. Uh, Paqueta as the other CM in the system played 40 games with uh, 12 goals, 10 assists. Even players like Lanzini had 9 goals, 9 assists. Antonio as the backup striker, third string, had 10 goals, 6 assists. Another 9 assists by Maxwell Cornett off the bench. Like, you're just seeing... The the, the stats are coming from all over the pitch, um, and it's just a really impressive tactic for generating all this much offense. And then finally, we haven't talked about it at all, but uh, Skamaka had an incredible run as well in only 43 starts, still managing 29 goals and 9 assists. So the goals came from all over. The strikers obviously had gr a great goal-scoring output, but those midfielders as well chipped in a ton. So the lowest-rated player in the average 11 is is the DM, which is something that's been true for the last several uh editions of Football Manager, but uh, Declan Rice, obviously solid in the back, is going to clean up the balls from the offense, like, is doing the things when you're watching the game that are important, but in terms of what the average rating is counting based on, like, how many passes they're making, how many scoring chances they're creating, how many interceptions they have, those numbers might be depressed a little bit, but that doesn't mean the player is performing poorly in your tactic. It's maybe just a poor metric that they're using to evaluate DMs, so don't be overly concerned by that. But this tactic is incredible. I hope that you download it. I hope that you subscribe and like, like the video. I hope that you join our Discord server. The link is in the description. And most of all, uh, please consider being a Patreon to the channel. Um, our first Patreon is Mate Benchik. Thank you so much for contributing uh, to the Patreon as well. And remember, I will be putting brand new tactics, uh, early access into um, a Dropbox folder for all patrons to have access to. Sometimes maybe some meme tactics uh, just for you to have fun with. Uh, and there's lots of other benefits as well. So I hope to see you again soon for the next tactic test for the beta of FM23. But signing off for now, I'll see you later. <laughs>